Our country faces some of the biggest challenges any of us will have seen in our lifetimes. With our economy, in our NHS, on our borders. Three months ago, I was brought in to fix those challenges. Is this some kind of joke? The Conservative government has been in power for 12 years. It's given us the highest inflation in 40 years, the highest taxation since the Second World War, the biggest drop in living standards since records began, and average wages falling at their fastest rate for more than two decades. And guess what? For two years, Sunak was actually running the economy as Chancellor. And this was the result. People's bills rising, everyone poorer. Energy bills doubling, inflation at a 40-year high. You made millions pay more in income tax by changing the thresholds. You have dragged very low earners into the 20% tax bracket and before they didn't pay any tax. We have tried a failed experiment. You were Chancellor until a few weeks ago. UK growth is set to be the worst in the G20 besides Russia. Another study says we will go from 18th to 31st out of 38 OECD countries. Members here see their pounds shrinking probably as fast as they see their high streets closing. Of course I want to see growth growing, Nick, right? Of course. Now, th we have to think about how to do that. And all that comes on top of a decade of soaring food banks, poverty, homelessness, falling life expectancy and wage stagnation under successive Conservative governments. And then there's the catastrophic damage inflicted on the country by the hard Brexit Sunak championed. The Centre for Economic Reform claims the government has lost out on £40 billion in taxes because of the damage done to the country's output by leaving the European Union. And then there's this. We see the UK pretty close to the bottom of the league table in terms of the forecast for economic growth, particularly in 2023. So the UK essentially sees no growth at all. And the only country that was worse than the UK was sanctioned Russia. But apparently there's no need to panic because... I was brought in to fix those challenges. Never underestimate just how thick this lot think we all are. Under my leadership, the government's priorities are your priorities the people's priorities. Together, we're putting your needs above politics. Sunak's public order bill will treat peaceful protests like knife and gang crime. His Bill of Rights bill will reduce human rights protections and significantly reduce government accountability. His planned anti-strike laws will reduce the right of workers to take industrial action, forcing people to work against their will and allowing them to be sacked if they won't submit. Just think about that. And do you see a pattern emerging here? These are all measures deliberately designed to restrict opportunities for individuals and groups to express their opposition to the government. When I first entered office, we took difficult but fair decisions. That would be spending cuts, more tax hikes for workers and uncapping bonuses for millionaire bankers. And we're introducing new laws that make it unambiguously clear that if you come to our country illegally, you will not have the right to stay and will be removed. And the Sunak's plans, not even the Home Secretary who believes we do need to leave the European Convention on Human Rights can explain how someone with a valid asylum claim can actually come here legally. Is there not something unsavoury about the son of a successful middle-class migrant prepared to turn away asylum seekers with a valid claim. No. Those difficult decisions also allowed us to give the NHS record resources. I just want to have a look at this. This is a funding uh, chart and it shows the annual changes in health spending. And you can really see that from when the Conservatives came into power in 2010, there has been a fall, a queer squeeze in funding for the health service. NHS backlogs. We're reaching the point where millions of people are anxiously waiting for the treatment that they desperately need. I'm afraid some of our hospitals are falling apart. Uh, the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in King's Lynn near me, uh, bits of the hospital will be held up by stilts. And take a look at this FT graphic depicting the size of the NHS waiting list under Labour and then consecutive Conservative governments.